In today's video, we will be taking an unboxing and an overview of the MSI MagForge 111R PC case. So this PC case is an ATX case, and I got it for actually a really good price. Now it's a used deal, uh, used Amazon deal. Um, I think I paid sort of about £45, which I think is actually a really good price. Basically, let's just uh, take an unboxing and an overview of it today. This looks to me like a pretty decent case. It only comes with the one ARGB fan at the back. And we have looked at the 112R or the 112R. And I will link that in the top right hand corner as well. So you can go and check that out as well at a later date. The 111R is actually a really good case as well. And yeah, let's, let's get into it. So here it is, our 111R, MSI MagForge 111R, and yeah, I do think it actually does look a really good case from the initial impressions. As I said, it's very similar to the 112, um, except this one really just, just has the one 120mm uh, ARGB fan at the back, rather than the three ARGB fans at the front and then the one at the back. Um, so as I... As normal guys, I'll go through the whole case again, we'll go around all the sides and then we'll look at the back and obviously the front as well. And we'll just talk through the general specs and just go through it, so let's go. So at the front we have a perforated mesh, which again for modern day PC cases, this is the, this is uh, what I would you know prefer basically. I think the days of the glass is kind of gone now, isn't it? So good mesh at the front for good airflow. We can fit three 120 millimeter fans at the front here one of the downsides is that the radiate radiate support is actually quite poor in this case uh, officially only supports a 240 millimeter at the front which actually is really quite disappointing there is there is only room for 240 rad or 240 millimeter rad 360 millimeter rads aren't possible although you can get three 120 millimeter fans at the front it just doesn't seem the clearance for the actual uh, 360 rad so it, it is really quite disappointing in that in that sense although to be honest it does look like there is possibly room but officially it isn't supported and msi say on their website it's not supported so i don't know maybe maybe you could do it maybe you could get a 280 in there i, I do think you could get a 280 in there at very minimum but officially only supports up to a 240 at the front but yeah, overall decent space at the front there. We, we can just take off the uh, front panel here just, just put by putting it out. There we go. So that just removes there and there's no there's no cables there. So that's quite nice and obviously if you're just cleaning the inside there, you can just clean that quite comfortably. There's no separate sort of dust filter so you will only get the mesh there. So if you are someone who really is concerned about dust, Maybe this isn't the right case for you, but I think for most people this is going to be enough just to take this off and just clean that, so that's not a problem. And it just snaps on very, very easily again. So let's move to the top. Again, the top is kind of what we con would consider fairly modern by today's standards, certainly for a modern budget uh, PC case, uh, but it doesn't have USB-C USB -C support unfortunately so you do only have the two usb 3 ports at the front which i think are usb 3.1 but i'll put it b below all the specifications um we do have a sort of led button first of all before those two usb 3 ports and we do have the microphone and headphone jack two separate ports not a combined one which is obviously nice and we have our reset button and then we have our big clicky power button so pretty much a standard layout at the, at the top there. Uh, for pretty much budget PCs nowadays, that's kind of the, the, the expected. Some budget PCs only have the two USB 2s at the front even, with the one USB 3 A, A port support at the front. So um, yeah, that, that, that is pretty poor, but I think the two USB 3s are, are perfectly acceptable here. And then we do have a magnetic dust filter over the top. And for your fan support at the top, I believe it's either two, four, um, two 120 millimeter fans or two 140 millimeter fans. And I think again, the maximum at the top is only a 240 rad. 
Although, again, looking at clearance-wise, I don't think you're going to have a lot of clearance for radiators. So I think if you are going to put a radiator in here, an AIO or something similar to that, I would only just go at the front rather than the top, actually. I would just completely leave the top only for fans, personally. But, again, it's up to you. Like I say, there is a controller at the back, a six-port ARGB fan controller. So if you are adding a lot of ARGB fans, you will have perfect support for that because you can just plug in your ARGB fans directly into that uh, hub and then uh, obviously you can it, that will get powered by one SATA cable and then um, you'll, you'll be all good to go um, so yeah I mean obviously that's that's a nice thing that with, with this case you do get that hub at the back but and I'll obviously go on to that as we go to the back as well but yeah let's just move on so at the back here is our one ARGB fan pre-installed it's the 120 millimeter fan. Um, there is a little bit of play up and down here, but you can't get any more than 120 millimeters at the back. No 140 millimeter support at the back for your fans, unfortunately. Uh, then our standard IO cutout for your motherboard. And then again, frustratingly, as it is a budget case, we have these like little knockouts, you know, these little like um, one time use PCI slots which i really don't like but they're there and it also has this little kind of um uh, i can't get that off my, with my thumb but basically it has like one of those little slide out things so you can slide it out put your cards in and slide that back which i don't like these things but it's okay it it, it does the job but yeah personally I, i'm not really that that much of a fan of that but it's it's okay and obviously the snap out things i really don't like at all but again on more or less every budget case nowadays, they do have these snap out things. But I, I am very happy that I only paid £45 for this, because I think for a, a decent ATX case like this one, £45 was more than acceptable, and it, it is a very good price. And it, Obviously I got it as a, as a used deal, but from what I can see, just looking at it from here, well, I haven't gone inside of it, but from looking at it from here, it still looks in pretty decent condition, so I'm fairly happy with, with my purchase. Um, and then we have our standard ATX power supply mounting here it can only be fitted fan side down rather than fan side up there's no um the screws the screw fittings aren't there for fan side up so obviously you can only install it fan side down which i think for budget cases that's pretty much what people are going to do anyway so i don't really see a problem there and then moving to the bottom of the actual case itself we have one of those really kind of an annoying uh psu dust filters but it's okay it does the job it's not like a slide out one which is far better it's one of these little kind of um funny ones which is just a little bit of mesh but again it will it will help uh a little bit to filter out dust but it's not great and then it does the job but it is there then we have four screws for the hard drive cage so if you take these four screws out then you'll be able to slide the hard drive cage out and then obviously you'll be all good there. So yeah, I think we've kind of covered the bottom and let's uh, go to the rear side panel now. So I just wanted to say, I think the camera might be a bit blurry here or maybe, I think it might be just due to the cold or something, but if the picture is coming out poor, I will try and change this in edit as best as I can. But I do apologize guys. But anyway, let's, let's move on anyway. Let's, let's, let's look, try and look past that. So these are the hard drive caddies and they take a 3.5 inch hard drive or a 2.5 inch SSD. Um, and there's two of them there, obviously. Um, we do have one SSD mount here, um, just at the top there, which you can take out by that screw. So you will be able to get a total of three drives in here potentially. But again, I think most people just take out this hard drive cage and just to totally just take it out. And then you've got, got full, the full room for your power supply. So that's great. Now in the bag of screws here that we've got, we've got one spare bank, spare blanking plate, as well as a few cable ties, which is nice. And then just your standard screws there. So that's all good. Um, and then there's the other hard drive caddy there. We do have our six port ARGB hub as well, which is obviously nice to see. And it's powered by a SATA cable, which is well, a SATA power cable, which is great. And then you can plug into your 5 volt ARGB header on your motherboard 
to get control of all those uh, ARGB fans. So that's great as well. We have our standard HD audio, which isn't all blacked out, but it's okay. I don't love that, but hey. Then we have our sort of standard front panel headers, your your hard drive LED, your power LED, your power switch and your reset switch. So again, that's all standard. I do like to see the block connector like NZXT do, but again, it is what it is. And our USB free port front panel headers. Um, so that plugs into your USB port, your USB free port on your motherboard uh, for your front panel uh, header support there. Uh, we do get an installation guide manual as well, but again, most people probably aren't going to use that. Now the cable management size is actually pretty good here. I'd say you've got at least, I'd say at least an inch, maybe even three centimeters or so, just to actually cable manage behind the motherboard here. So that's obviously plenty of room for even thick power supply cables, which is really great to see. And in terms of our power supply length, I think it's about 170 until the hard drive cage, and then obviously pretty much unlimited support up, um, up to the end of the case obviously once you take out the hard drive cage which I think nowadays most people do because we're in the age of M.2 now aren't we so again hard drives are kind of on the way out now so I think most people are going to remove the hard drive cage anyway so that's fine so yeah I think, I think we've covered the back there let's get to the front now now the front tempered glass only goes up to the power supply shrouds which I think most people have already seen now um, and also the mounting is these sort of four screws and then you take it out. So that's why I'm kind of putting the uh, case on the uh, on the table and then pulling it out. I don't really like this mechanism personally, but it, it is what it is basically. So it's, it's all right, it will do the job. So inside again, pretty spacious, actually pretty good to be fair. Um, MSI do know what they're doing with cases I find and I find their budget range is actually very very good and overall yeah I, I, I do like their budget range as you can tell on my channel because I've had quite a lot of MSI cases but yeah. In terms, of, in terms of GPU support on their specification page for this case MSI state that there's 330 millimeters support for your GPU so 33 centimeters or that's probably about 12 inch, uh, 13 inches actually. Um, and then about 160 I think it was for the CPU support. But again, I'll put it all below in terms of the CPU fan supports, you know, how um, how tall you can have your air cooler for your CPU heatsink basically, yeah. So that's pretty good support overall and it is quite big. Like I say, it is a full, NT full ATX board, full ATX case, sorry. Now, one person actually mentioned this in my comment section on one of my previous videos, but as stated, uh, there is actually only six standoffs pre-installed in this case, as this is a budget case, which is obviously catered towards more of a budget motherboard. So that means most most sort of more budget mother more motherboards only require six standoffs, but there will be three standoffs in your little bag of screws here, which are spare, or at least there should be anyway. And then you can just pre-install, well, you can actually just install those standoffs as well in the right positions. And then you have the full support for a full ATX board, which supports the nine standoffs. So, you know, it, it, it is fine to install a full size ATX bubble board in here, perfectly fine. Obviously EATX technically isn't supported, but you could probably you probably could do it if you really wanted to, but it isn't supported really, and you should only go ATX really. Um, there is quite a number of good cutouts here, obviously three at the side here and the two up top there, which is obviously great. Uh, there's two also at the bottom as well, so running all those sort of like funny little cables up there, like your HD audio and obviously your uh, front panel connectors and what have you is gonna be fine. Maybe even your USB free front panel header as well could maybe come through here if you've got one at the bottom of your motherboard rather than at the sides here. Pretty good support. I think technically you can even get some fans at the bottom here in the basement in the PSU shroud, but um, I don't know whether it's officially supported, so I'm not gonna say that officially you can, but um, you can obviously look for this in yourselves just to make sure. But I do think there is actually some mountain screws there, so I think you can fit two 120 millimeter fans at the bottom there as well but i don't know if it's official we've got our um 
ARGB fan here as well for a little bit of a ARGB effect. So, you know, a little bit of lighting basically, which is nice. Uh, I don't think the case has any other lighting on. Oh, it might have the power button lighting, but that's about it. There's no other lighting, unfortunately, but it's okay. And like I say, this really is a budget case, as I was saying, and I only paid £45, so I am quite happy that, with that. Also, as well, the... Um, the ARGB fan, I forgot to say, is a free pin header. Again, someone mentioned this in one of my uh, comments on one of my videos. I think it was on the 112R. Um, but basically, these are only free pin fans, which actually can't be controlled by the PWM setting in your motherboard. Um, so if you're looking for like the four pin PWM fans, this isn't it. And you will have to pay more for a PWM uh, supported case, uh, su supported case fans, because these are very cheap fans basically, so you won't get the full PWM support. So just be aware of that if you are buying this case, that you will uh, only get the free, the free pin header ones, which run at full speed. I think they more or less run at full speed or nothing basically. So although there might be a bit of play, but I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if it's any, if anyone wants to comment below just to clarify that. But I think free pin, free pin. Fan headers are basically like an on or on or an on or off, and that's it. So it's a budget, it's a budget case, and it's going to do what you need it to do. Um, so overall, I hope this video has kind of come out okay, guys. And I, I am looking at the video now, and it doesn't, it does look a little bit faded. I'll, be, I'll admit, but I will try and fix that in post, and then we'll hopefully we can uh, sort that out. Uh, but I just wanted to get this video up today. You know, it is very cold as well around here. And I think there's probably a bit of moisture and what have, have you on the camera. So it's probably not come out quite as well this video as I wanted it to. But I've done my best here. And I hope you guys do appreciate what I'm trying to do on this channel. I will have on the next video, there will be a sort of Christmas message video. Because this is the kind of like last video before my sort of, sort of unofficial Christmas break, if you will. Um... And then obviously we'll, we'll be creating videos in the new year. Uh, so I want you to kind of know this is my last video of this year in terms of an actual like proper video. But I will be releasing a Christmas video, which is more of a video to subscribe just to say, hey, this is what I've got planned for 2024 and I hope you like 2023. So yeah, I really do hope you guys want to stick around and obviously subscribe and see more of these videos and obviously like the video for the algorithm, which will really help me. And leave me a comment below if you want to know anything more about this case. And uh, as always, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.